Hello class, welcome to this week's filmmaking lesson. So on today's, um, this week, I won't be here on Lois College because I'm going to Brooklyn, New York to go visit attractions and visit a hotel there. And, um, there's going to be, um, the King's Girl trailer too, but it was due to, um, <coughs> copyright issues. But it's in 2020, guys. You should watch it. Okay, so first, we're going to do Walt Disney Home Video Releases. And, um, I'll look up on, let's look up on 2019 Home Video and see. Because all of you class are really good at, um, working on those, um, those trapped Mishin, Nishizumi over, over the sewer. That's pretty good to you. Okay. We'll have to look up on, um, we did just send in three. We did Avengers Endgame, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Thor, Thor the Dark World. Okay. We did Aladdin. We did Aladdin. So, so, um, on, um, on today, we will be doing Brave 2012 film. Here is a plot in this film. In medieval Scotland, Princess Merida and the clan Don Dunbroch is given a bow and arrow by her father, King Fergus, for, for her sixth birthday to the dismay of her mother, Queen Eleanor. While venturing into the woods to fetch a stray arrow, Merida encounters a willow wi the wisp. Soon afterward, Mordu, a huge demon bear, attacks her family. Merida flees on horseback with Villanor, while Fergus and his men fend off Mordu, though the fight costs him on his, on his leg. Ten years later, Merida, now, the three, now with three younger brothers, discovers that she is to be betrothed to the son of one of her father's allies. Eleanor explains that failure to consent of, to the be, betrothal could harm Dunbroch, reminding Merida of a legend of a prince whose pride and refusal to follow his father's wishes destroyed his kingdom. An allied and the allied clan, Chiftlines, and their firstborn sons arrive to compete in the Highland Games for Merida's hand in marriage. Merida twists the rules, announcing that her that as her own clan's firstborn, she is eligible to compete for her own hand. She easily bests her suitors in an archery contest, shaming the other clans, and after the, a heated argument, with Eleanor run, runs away into the forest, wisps appear, leading her to the hut of an elderly witch. Merida bargains for a spell to change her fate, and the witch gives her an enchanted cake. When Merida gives Eleanor the cake, it transforms into her into a bear. Unable to speak but still retaining most of her human consciousness, Merida returns to the witch's cottage with Eleanor, only to find it deserted, and discovers a mes message from the witch. Unless Merida is able to mend the bond torn by pride before the second sunrise, the, the spell will become permanent Merida and Eleanor are led to the by the wisps to ancient ruins where they encounter Mordu. Realizing that Mordu was the prince in the legend, Merida vows that she will not let the same thing happen to her mother and concludes she needs to repair the family tapestry she damaged during their argument. They return to the castle to find the clans on the verge of war. Merida attends a relent and declare herself ready to choose a suitor as tradi tradition demands. But Eleanor prompts her instead to insist that their firstborns should be allowed to marry in their own time when, to whomever they choose. 
The clans agree, breaking tradition but renewing and strengthened, strengthening their alliance. Merida sneaks into the tapestry room with Eleanor. Eleanor, who is losing her humanity, attacks Fridges, but suddenly regains her composure and flees the castle. Mistaking the queen for Mordu and unable to listen to Merida, Bridges pursues the bear with the other clans. Locking Merida in the castle, Merida escapes with the assistance of her brothers, who have also eaten in the enchanted cake. They are now bear cubs. Merida repairs the tapestry and rides out after her father. Bridges and the clans capture Eleanor. But Merida intervenes and stops her father before Mordu arrives. Mordu batters the clan warriors and targets Merida. But Eleanor intercedes, holding off Mordu and causing him to, the cr to be crushed by falling Menhar. This releases the spirit of a prince, who silently thanks Merida for freeing him. Merida covers her mother in the repaired tapestry, but she remains a bear. As the sun rises for the second time, Merida realizes the mistakes she has made and recounsels with Eleanor, unknowingly fulfilling the true meaning of the witch's message, message and reversing the spell's effects. With Mordu gone, Merida and Eleanor work together on a new tapestry when they are called to, to the docks to bid farewell to the other clans and ride their horses. All right. So, on on tomorrow, we'll be, we will be doing Monsters University 2013 film. Here is a plot in this film. Michael Mikrozowski, a young monster who is disliked by all, by all of his classmates, aspires to become a scarer. A monster who enters the human world at night to scare children and harvest their screams of rare energy. After visiting Monsters Incorporated, Monstropolis, most profitable scaring company, on a school field trip, 11 years later, Mike is now a first year scare major at Monsters University, where he meets James P. Sully Sullivan. Mike studies hard, while the privileged Sully, coming from a family of talented scarers, allies only on his natural ability and be begins to falter. As the semester progresses, Mike and Sully attempt to join a fraternity, but only Sully is accepted to into Roar Mega Roar, the most pre prestigious fraternity on campus at the semester's final exam. A fight between the two causes them to accidentally open Dean Abigail Hardscrabble's Cherished scream canister, hard scrabble, fails them both on the spot, citing Mike's complete lack of scariness and Sully's laziness, to which Roar and Mega War promptly expels Sully. Wanting to prove himself, Mike enters the university scares game and makes a deal with hard scrabble. She will reinstate him and his teen to the scare program if they, with, if they win. But Mike must leave the university if they lose. He joined the fraternity of misfits named Ozma Kappa, but they are initially denied entry to the games for being one team member short. So Sully joins them upon seeing the competition as his only way back into the scare program. Ozma Kappa finished last in the first challenge, but are saved from elimination when another team is disqualified for cheating. Ozma Kappa improved gradually due to Mike's training and intricate knowledge of scaring in the advance through each following challenge, finishing second to Roar Mega Roar in the final round. They defeat Roar Mega Roar with a decisive final scare by Mike in the simulation bedroom. However, Mike discovers that he only won because Sully secretly rigged 
the machine to give Mike a maximum score. Determined to prove that he can become a scarer, Mike breaks into the school's door-making lab where he enters a door to the human, to the human world, but upon, upon finding himself at, some, at a summer camp in a cabin full of children, he is forced to flee into the woods. Meanwhile, War Make a War offers to reinstate Sully, but instead he confesses to White Scrabble that he cheated just as she is alerted to Mike, Mike's break in. White Scrabble forbids anyone else from going through the door, but Sully sneaks through the through to rescue Mike. After recounseling, they they try to return but are unable to exit after Hard Scrabble deactivates the door while waiting for the authorities to arrive, pursued by camp rangers, but realizes that the only way to escape is to generate enough en scream energy to power the door from their side. Working together, Sully and Mike terrify the camp rangers and generate an overwhelming amount of scream energy. Returning to the lab seconds before the device overloads and explodes in front of a surprised hard scrabble. Mike and Sully are expelled from the university for Mike's break-in and Sully's cheating respectively, while the other members of Who's Kappa are accepted into the scare program for the next semester as hard scrabble is imp was impressed by their performances in the games. As Mike leaves on the bus, Sully chases at to raise his spirits. Hard Scrabble then appears and wishes them good luck, stating that they were the first students to have surprised her. Sometime later, the two get jobs at the ma mailroom of, of Monsters Incorporated, eventually working their way to join the scare team. All right. So on Wednesday. We will be doing Inside Out 2015 film. Here is a plot in this film. Riley is born in the small town of Minnesota. Within her mind's headquarters, five personifications of her basic emotions joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger come to life and influence her ways of doing things via a control console. As she grows up, her experiences become memories, stored in colored orbs, which are sent into long-term memory each night. Her five most important core memories are housed in a hub. Each power is an aspect of her personality, which takes the form of floating islands. Joy acts as a, as a de facto leader, and since she and the other emotions do not understand Sadness's propose. She tries to keep Sadness away from the council. At the age of 11, Riley's parents moved the family to San Francisco for her father's new job. Riley's first experiences are not good. The, the new house is cramped and old. The local pizza parlor only serves broccoli as a topping. Her father is under stress from his job, and due to a mix-up, the, mo the moving van with their with their belongings gets lost and won't arrive for two for arrive for weeks. When sadness begins touching Riley's happy memories, turning them sad, Joy tries to guard them to by isolating her. On Riley's first day at her new school, sadness causes Riley to cry in front of her class. Creating Riley's first sad core memory, Joy tries to dispose of it, but accidentally knocks the other core memories loose during the struggle of Sadness. Deactivating the personality islands, Joy, Sadness, and the core memories are sucked down of the headquarters and sent to long-term memory storage. In Joy's absence, anger, fear, and disgust are left in control, with disastrous results, distancing, Rally from her parents, friends, and hobbies. As a result, her personality on the islands to gradually crumble and fall into the memory dump, where memories are forgotten. 
Rally anger inserts an idea into a cons into the console, prompting Rally to run away to Minnesota, believing we will restore her happiness. While navigating through the vast maze like long term memory on right area, Joy and Sadness encounter Bing Bong, Rally's childhood imaginary friend, who suggests riding the train of thought back to headquarters. Their route to the train station is fraught with close calls and mishaps as more personality elements crumble. The three eventually catch the train, but it halts when Riley falls asleep, then derails entirely when Honesty Island collapses with Riley's theft of her mother's credit card. In desperation, Joy bends in sadness and tries to write a recall to back to headquarters, but the ground bill Below the tube collapses, bringing it and plunging Joy and Bing Bong into the memory dump. Joy begins to lose hope and breaks into tears, but then discovers a sad memory that turned happy when Riley's parents and friends comforted her. Joy finally understands Sadness's purpose to induce empathy in others, prompting them to reach out to Riley when she is emotionally overwhelmed and needs help, but preventing Riley from feeling sad. Joy was also keeping her from feeling happiness. Joy and Bing Bong try to use Bing Bong's old wagon rocket to escape the memory dump, but are unable to fly high enough. On their final attempt, Bing Bong jumps out to allow Joy to escape, then fades away. Joy reunites with Sadness and manages to return to headquarters, only to discover that Angel's Anger's sorry, I did not say Angel's class, sorry. Okay, um Anger Anger's idea to has disabled the council, rendering Riley empathetic to the surprise of the others. Joy hands control of the council to Sadness, who is unable to reactivate it and prompt Riley to return home. As Sadness reinstalls the core of memories, Riley arrives home to her parents and tearfully confesses that she misses Minnesota and her old life. Her parents comfort her and admit they will also miss Minnesota. Joy and Sadness work the council together, creating a new core memory, a new island forms, representing Riley's acceptance of her, of her new life in San Francisco. A year later, Riley has adapted to her new home, made new friends, and returned to her old hobbies while acquiring a few more new ones. Inside headquarters, her emotions admire Riley's new personality islands and all work together on a newly expanded console with room for all for them all. Okay. So So on Thursday we will be doing the Good Dinosaur 2015 film. Here is a plot in this film. In an alternate history, the asteroid would, that would have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago passes safely over Earth. Millions of, year, millions of years later, Apatosaurus, corn farmers Henry and Anita, Ida have children. Libby, Buck, and the runt, Arlo, who has trouble adjusting to farm life while, it, while his excesses, successful siblings are allowed to make their mark a mud print of the family's corn silo. Arlo's timid nature makes tasks difficult for him. Henry attempts to give Arlo a sense of purpose by putting him in charge of guarding their silo and helps him set a trap. He captures a cave boy, but Arlo cannot bring himself to kill him, and sets him free. Disappointed, Henry takes Arlo to track the cave boy, leading them to an, into, the, into a raven. Henry saves Arlo from a flash flood before being swept away and killed. Without his father, Arlo's shoulders were of a workload. He spots the same cave boy inside the silo and, blaming him for his father's death, chases him into a river where he hits his head 
on a stone in his, in his knocked unconscious. Awakening, he finds himself far from home and tries to survive on his own, but becomes trapped in the, when a boulder pins his leg. The next day, Ola wakes to find his leg has been freed. And the cave boy appears with food for him. The cave boy then leads Arlo to a berry tree where the cave boy fends off a large snake. Amazing Arlo and impressing one nearby eccentric Styracosaurus, Star who wants to keep the boy, he forces Arlo to compete with him to give the boy na a name he will respond to, which Arlo finally wins when he calls him Spot. Arlo and Spot bond as Arlo laments his lost family, and Spot reveals that his own parents are dead. Later, when a storm strikes, Arlo runs away in fear and loses the riverbank. He has been following him, following home. The next morning, Arlo wakes to find Spot at his side. They are noticed by a band of pterodactyls led by Thunderclap, who appear to be conducting a rescue operation but turn out to be a savagely carnivorous. When the Pterodactyls Petero, try to take try to take Spot, Arlo and Spot free flee. Happening upon a of upon a pair of Tyrannosaurus named Nash and Ramsey, who ward off the Pterodactyls. Nash, Ramsey, and their father Butch have lost their have lost their herd and lo, of Longhorns, so Arlo offers Spot help in sniffing them out. The group locates the herd, but Butch, Butch recognizes the work of cattle wrestlers and uses Arlo as a lure. Arlo and Spot attract the attention of four wrestler Villa Cyraptor. Following Butch and his family to attack, after the wrestlers have been driven out of the pasture, Arlo joins the Tyrannosaurus in driving the cattle south when he sees the familiar mountain peaks of, the, of his homeland in the distance, and leaves with him with Spot to return home. Along the way, they encounter the, an adult feral caveman in the distance, and though Spot shows interest, Arlo dissuades him and they continue on. As another storm approaches, Thunderclap and the pterodactyls return to an, an attack and carry Spot away. Arlo becomes entangled in vines, where he has a vision of Henry leading him home. Arlo instead resolves to save Spot, making the vision of his father proud before it fades away. Arlo finds and attacks the pterodactyls, who have corned Spot at the river. Arlo and Spot together plunge Delta Thunderclap and the, and the pterodactyls into the water where they are swept helplessly downstream. When another flash flood occurs, Arlo leaps into the water to rescue Spot as the two are swept away toward the waterfall. Arlo protects Spot as the two plummet down the fall and carries him to shore. As they approach Arlo's home, the two again hear the unknown cavemen call and are approached by an entire cave family. With great reluctance, Arlo pushes Spot to join the his adoptive family, and the two of them share a tearful goodbye. Arlo finally arrives home with to his to his mother and siblings. It makes his mark on the silo between those of his mother and father. All right, so on Friday, excuse me. I just collected two times, but I did one time. Okay, on Friday. We will be doing Finding Dory Tyson 16 film. Sorry, class, I just, I just going back two times, okay? Anyway, here's the plot in this film. Dory, a regal blue tang, gets separated from her parents as a child. As she grows up, Dory attempts to search for them, but gradually forgets them due to her short term memory loss. In a flashback from Finding Nemo, she joins Mullen, a clownfish looking for his missing son Nemo after accidentally swimming into him. One year after meeting Marlin and Nemo, 
Joy is living with them on the reef. One day, Joy has a flashback and remembers her parents. She decides to look for them, but her memory problem is an, is an obstacle. But she suddenly remembers that they lived at the Jewel of Morro Bay, California, across the ocean when Nemo mentions his name. Ron and Nemo accompany Dory on her journey. With the help of Crash, their sea turtle friend, they ride on the California current to California. Upon arrival, they explore a shipwreck full of lost cargo, where Dory accidentally awakens a giant humbled squid who pursues them and almost divorce Nemo. They manage to trap the squid in a large shipping container, and Marlin Debray berates Dory for endangering them. Her feelings hurt. Dory travels to the surface to seek help where she is captured by staff members from the trio's nearby destination, the Marine Life Institute. Dory is placed in quarantine and tagged. With there she meets a grouchy butthole meaning octopus named Hank. Dory's tag marks her for transfer to an aquarium in Cleveland. Hank who fears being released in, back into the ocean, agrees to help Dory find their parents in exchange for a tag. In one exhibit, Dory encounters her childhood friend Destiny, a nearsighted whale shark who, she, who used to communicate with Dory through pipes, and Billy, a beluga whale who mistakenly believes ha he has lost his ability to echolocate. Dory subsists subsequently his, has flashbacks to of life of, with her parents and struggles to recall details. She finally remembers how she was separated from her parents. She overheard her mother crying one night, left to retrieve a shell to cheer her up, and was pulled away by an undertow current on, in, out into the ocean. Roland and Nemo attempt to rescue Dory with the help of two lazy California sea lions named Luke and Rudder and a common law loan named Becky, they manage to get into the Institute and find her in the pipe system. Other, other blue tanks tell them that Dory's parents escaped from the Institute a long time ago to search for her and never came back, leaving Dory believing that they have died. Hank retrieves Dory from the tank, accidentally leaving with Marlon and Nemo behind. He is then apprehended by one of the employees and un 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 unintentionally drops Dory into the drain, flushing, flushing her out of the to the ocean while wandering aimlessly. She comes across the trail shell of shells, remembering that she has she was young. Her parents said had set out a similar trail to help her find her way back home. She follows it at the end of the trail. Dory finds an empty brain coral with with, mul with multiple shells tra shell trails leading to it. As she turns to leave, she sees her parents Jenny and Charlie in the distance. They tell her they spent years laying down the trails for her to follow in the hopes that she would eventually find them. Roland, Nemo, and Hank end up in the truck taking various aquatic creatures to Cleveland. Destiny and Bailey escape from their exhibit to help Dory rescue them. Once on board on the truck, Dory persuades Hank to return to the sea with her, and together they hijack the truck and drive it over busy highways, creating havoc before crashing it into the ocean, freeing all the fish. Dory, along with her parents and, her, and new friends, return to the reef with Marla and Nemo. In the post credit scene, the tank gang from Finding Nemo, still trapped inside their new algae, now algae-covered plastic bags, reach California one year after floating across the Pacific Ocean, where they are picked up by staff members into the Marine Life Institute. All right. That's all the home video releases we got. Yeah, I'm sorry, class, about clicking twice over over back once to back to Google. Anyway, so second, we will be doing 
Ever Monkey Pictures and Donkey Mobile Care Productions and Donkey Teeth Company Shorts. It is about the intro of a demon lord slash Mao Mao who has been reluctantly in the in a Gotham City in Wonder Brothers. They set out on a journey to uh to find to find uh, to find an evil plan to kill all the people in Gotham City. But Demon Lord reluctantly defeated by Batman Batgirl, I should say. But Batgirl, she was she was taken to the hospital and she got recovered by his wing injury. Alright. So so on um so third we will be doing Simpson Galaxy No Ten. It is about um is about um Nishizumi Nishizumi being trapped in um in a sewer, being rescued by a woman named um named the heroic character from Andrew, Yusha Yusha or Yulia Shardet. She she's been rescued to Nishi Nishizumi Nishizumi Miho and then they took the the four the four of them took Nishizumi to Scotland and take and search for food. Also, there's gonna be a new anime. If you can download down um, Ascendance of a Bokram and Hatage Kimono Michi and um Azurling and High School Prodigies have it easy, even another word and Sakura Sakura Club or Kako Sakura Club, you should probably download it, okay? Alright, that's all I got for today. Let's do some work now.